All right, so today we have this nice Nakihama Karasa. Now, the reason I'm making this clip is um, recently someone asked me, you know, Addy uh, with those stones that are like, you know, they're shaped crazy. And it's called Copa, uneven shape. Now, some people, including myself sometimes, show a stone, you know, that's predominantly, you know, squared off and stuff, they say copa, and even one that would, you know, be perfect as a copa. But truly, copa is an uneven shape, which is what we have here. And, you know, it's really not hot, you know, to work with these things. They look, you know, strange and, um, <laughs> wonder like why it's cut so weird and well this one I cut came in a bigger piece um, I had seen some close-up photos I had requested them because I thought I saw something and uh, I was right sometimes with these stones you know um, you wind up with like grain there's, there's always like layering most of the time in Awasedo and sometimes it's not perfectly parallel with the top and bottom. Occasionally it'll come up. Now when that comes to the surface, it looks like a little squiggly line. Yeah, the first glance, first use for a while may be fine. Lap it down, it can get bigger. It can also go away. All right, but when it gets bigger, with more use, what happens is, is those, uh, that squiggly line it starts to fray and then it can spit little bits of stone out it can chip out and leave like a gouge. You really don't want that in the top of your stone if it's in an area where you're going to hone. Now, if you have a small stone, no matter where it is, it's going to be like, you know, a problem. So what I did, I took a gamble because the report was that the stone was hard, and it is. This is a hard stone. Not super hard, but very hard. And... Um, I've had good experiences with Nakayama Karasu. There's like a Mizu Asahi color, not very green, more of a blue gray. And um, figured I, you know, if I could save it, if I could salvage it, make a good Pahona razors, that would be great. The way it was, you could probably do knives, maybe some, you know, heavy cutting tools, but you know, mostly I do razors, so there's that. I just did a video and cut the tome off of this, which is this little piece right here. So I'll make a slurry. And you know, for what it's worth, I think it's pretty cool to have a tomo that matches your stone, that was cut from your stone. Um, it's not necessary. To be honest, most of the time I actually do better. Hone in with a different piece of tome on the girl and one cut from the stone, but the cool factor is there. So we have a very nice stone. I'm gonna put this out of the way. Gotta stop reaching in front of the camera, sorry about that. Anyway, so I have this blade, and this is just like a practice run. This is a, a Wall Street pipe. Very nice blade, a little bit of a sway back. Uh, nice pipe engraving, anyway. And, you know, I'm on a die here. It's a Japanese uh, uh, wood block. Uh, I got some wood uh, rubber glued to the top. So, you know, you can see the odd shape isn't really affecting anything. And as a matter of fact, you know, the stone being thin and all, See how the toe is off? So is the heel. If you have a wide stone, the heel comes off, the toe is on. After a while, your toe winds up with more wear than the heel. So, the skinny stone can really help you out with regulating wear. I mean, you know, that's like a real tedious point. Most people do not hone that much. Well, they don't hone one razor that much. You would probably see some sort of effect there. I got, I don't know, 10 years, but for the most part, it's just.
just speculation. But it's there. Can't deny it. Anyway, so you can see on a flat surface, this is working really nice. The shape of the stone is not impeding any of my cross stroke, my X stroke. Now I do the reverse X stroke thing. Back to regular axis, heel leading. Got another stone over here. I'm clipping it with the scales. I just sealed it. Let me move it. I want to knock it over. It's still like kind of tacky. Anyway, X strokes again. Reverse X strokes. Now, if I was going to roll. Back to regulars, whatever, it's a piece of cake, you know, the shape of the stone. Looks a little weird, but, you know, uh, this is the result of uh, saving a piece of rock that it makes an excellent home. Um, stones like this will generally cost less. Like, for example, let's just say that this was a full 8x3x1. By by this would be $2,000. That stone does not cost $2,000, now, in the hand, this one's thin, I don't know, 15 millimeters, 18, something like that. You know, you just, like this. I have the camera in a weird place, well, it's my phone actually, so I'm trying to not catch glare from the overheads. Keep it centered. Anyway, again, no problem. Flip it around. Same thing. It's a piece of cake. You know, don't fear the uneven stone. Save yourself some money. And I think they're kind of cool. And don't get me wrong, I love the big rectangle, but like who's got 2K to drop down on a stone every now and then? I mean, I've done it not too often. So I got myself a nice little Nakayama Carrasso. Very hard. And it's a stellar stone. I mean, I honed on this earlier today. I did my greens wedge just after I finished sealing it and uh, lapping it, making sure like, you know, everything was kosher here on the top. Um, I put the greens wedge on it and went to town and man, what a shave. You could feel it. This has a little bit of a drier feel. It's smooth, but there's a little bit of coarse to the smooth. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's not like glass. It's not like that frozen chocolate thing. It's a real nice honing sensation. Feedback is more pronounced than you would get off one of the stones with that chocolate bar feeling. So it's even easier to read. Speed is, I don't know, I say like medium. On water, it's slow, but it's not painfully slow. It's not like a super hot stone that just like takes forever to get somewhere. And I love those stones, but sometimes I like to go faster. <laughs> stone like this will do it. Now, this blade really needs a bevel set. I just pulled that out of my work bin. I can tell you already that I've cut into some steel here. So I got a good amount of particle density in this stone. I'm straight across the board, aside from the cut, which is where there's a high class stone. Smaller? Yes. Odd shape? Yes. 
but it's going to turn out a beautiful edge. It already did. Like I said, I already tested it. The shave was like stellar. I mean, beyond stellar. It was amazing. I'm feeling my face now in my jowl area. And there's, there's no bumpies in there. You know, and that's the first place I, and that's from pushing in on the surface. There's nothing. Forget that. I won't have anything there. I won't have stubble for 24 hours. But when I push in and I don't feel stubble, take a look at this under a scope. Not a scope, excuse me. Loop. Yeah, bevel's nice. Nice polish. Nice haze. Polish is not quite mirror, although I can see the reflection of the lights up above me. But it's pretty hazy. It's like a typical Nakayama. I glass though. I'm gonna clean it up, show you the bottom. I'm probably not gonna keep this one. Yeah, I have a couple of crosses, a bunch of them actually. This one was more of a challenge. See if I could get it into working condition. See, like, hard, real hard. Uh, no skin on the back, so, like, this entire thing is clear stone. You can see the Karasu coming through. So, uh, that's something you look for when you buy Karasu. Sometimes it's only, like, you know, two millimeters up on the top, and then the rest is Asai. This is Karasu through and through. You know, nice piece of rock. Shaped a little weird, but easy to use.